Well, for all you bacon lovers, this should make you think twice before pigging out. A virus that kills baby pigs is spreading throughout the country. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says California and Wyoming are the latest states to report having pigs infected with the porcine epidemic diarrhea. That brings the total of to 22 states where pig farms have the virus. The first case in the U.S. was reported back in April, and since then, thousands of piglets have died. Symptoms in sick swines include diarrhea, vomiting, and severe dehydration. Lucky for humans, the virus does not make people sick only baby pigs. But the bug is causing pork prices to soar and is sparking fears of a pork shortage. For more on the deadly pig virus, I was joined earlier by Dr. Michael Greger, Director of Public Health and Animal Agriculture at the Humane Society. He started out by reiterating that the virus is not dangerous to humans. Although the virus is found in pig feces and there's widespread fecal contamination of the U.S. pork supply, it is not known to cause sickness in animals. But the same factory farming practices that led to the emergence and spread of this dangerous virus for pigs is also the same risky practices that have led to pathogens that can kill people. Thousands of people like swine flu. Right now we're neck deep in flu season. And the virus that's killing and infecting most Americans now, the flu virus, is still H1N1. This swine flu virus that emerged in 2009 has killed over 10,000 Americans, infected 60 million Americans, and that virus definitively tied to factory farming practices, the same practices that have now led to this diarrhea virus. Can, can you talk more about these risky practices, uh, how the virus in, in, is transmitted, and why in this case only baby pigs are affected? Uh, the reason that these so-called factory farms are really breeding grounds for disease is because the sheer numbers of animals, the overcrowding, the stress of confinement, the lack of adequate ventilation, no fresh air or sunlight. You put all these factors together, you really have kind of the perfect storm environment for the emergence and spread of new bacteria and viruses. And that's why the American Public Health Association has called for a moratorium on these factory farming practices because of the public health implications of how we now raise pigs. Mm. Have we ever seen anything like this? This quite like this before? We have not this particular virus. It's new to the U.S. as of last year, but there have been a number of other similar viruses that are spread. I mean, if you imagine, if you have, you know, overcrowd tens of thousands of pigs in these filthy football field sized sheds to lie snout to snout atop their own waist, you can see how it's just kind of a, a viral incubator for these kind of diseases. If you put a thousand people in an elevator, someone sneezes, you know, a lot of people are going to get sick. And that's the problem with packing so many animals together. And so we really need to heed um, the public health community's call to get rid of these kind of risky mm, practices. Poor, poor piggies there. Uh, what is, uh, do you, what, what do you expect? Is this just going to keep spreading? We see it in 22 States now. We're going to keep spreading. I mean, you know, boy, these pigs are, you know, born in North Carolina, fattened in the fields of Iowa, often slaughtered in California. We, uh, you know, our meat can travel a thousand miles on the hoof before it arrives at our plates. They trade these pigs like trading cards all across the country. You cannot stop this virus once it's spread. And it really just highlights um, how poor the biosecurity is in these kind of facilities that you can't keep this virus out. And unfortunately, the concern is you're not going to be able to keep viruses out that have human health implications as well. Mm. Now, now, I um, want to switch gears a little bit to the economic implications of what is this doing to the hog industry and how is it affecting meat prices, food prices? There's certainly a concern that uh, there's going to be an increase in pork prices. But, you know, in some ways that could be a signal to the industry. If all the industry cares about is the bottom line, right? I mean, if the implications for people in terms of food safety aren't going to do it, well, then maybe, you know, the, the hit in the pocketbook is going to have the industry rethink some of these practices and really move. Um, we have good data showing showing that this porcine epidemic diarrhea virus is much higher risk in these industrial large factory farms compared to smaller farms that actually let pigs move around and, and allowed outside. And so maybe, you know, it's now the economic calculus for these, the reason that they pack them all in is because, you know, per per price per pig when you pack them in like kind of parked cars, you can reduce the, the per pound cost of production. But when there's these other costs that can't be externalized onto society, then maybe the industry will think about changing their practices. All right. Well, now that we notice and we, we know this, uh, what can we as consumers do to, to help? Well, we can really exercise our consumer purchasing power and demand, for example, um, uh, crate-free pork. There's been a big movement. Um, it's 
large supermarket chains and restaurants demanding that the pork industry at least not keep these mother pigs crammed in these little metal cages barely larger than the bodies where they can't even turn around their whole lives. And that kind of stress can lead to the, the impairment of their immune system that can increase the risk of diseases that can have human health implications. Mm. Well, a good time to be a vegetarian, I guess. <laughs> Doctor, I appreciate you coming on the show. That was Dr. Michael Greger, Public Health and Animal Agriculture at the Humane Society.